Hey folks, Lake Speed Jr. I'm here at EFI University and we're doing the teardown on the Engine Performance Expo engine. And man, if you remember, if you watched any of those uh, episodes, Gary Stennett and Steve Williams came in and talked about their fogging spray called Foggit. Uh, perfect name, by the way. And the whole idea was to have this fogging spray to prevent corrosion in the cylinders when the engine was sitting. So especially with oxygenated fuels, it can be a bit of an issue. So you know, this engine's been shut down for maybe a month or so. And you would think that in a month, it couldn't possibly have any rust in it. But when we dropped the pan today and pulled it apart, of course, we were running an oxygenated fuel. Sure enough, there was a little bit of discoloration, some corrosion, a little bit of rust in the cylinders. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to take the profilometer and we're going to measure these cylinders. We're going to actually measure the same cylinder in a spot that basically looks brand new. You can see the cross hatch angle. It looks like a normal honed, you know, shiny cylinder. And we're going to check the surface finish of that. And then we're going to compare that to the surface finish of one of these you know, darker discolored areas. So right now over here in this cylinder, I have it already located in one of those darker, more corroded areas. So let's go ahead and push the button and then we'll let the profilometer tell us what it sees. You can probably see that a little bit on the camera. If not, I'll be rolling over it. Don't worry about it. Uh, of that cylinder trace. And what you're seeing already are these irregularities. And that's the key, is that because if there's any kind of corrosion, it's going to create these little peaks and valleys. And not the peaks and valleys that we want that you've created from the honing process. These are very irregular shapes. And you can see, oh, this one looks like someone took a dump truck and backed over that cylinder. It is so bad. So, and, and you can see right off the bat, the RA is 23. The RK is 58, the RVK is 20, or so 80, and the RPK is 21. And again, you look at the, the cylinder trace, and it is all over the map. You got all kinds of crazy peaks and valleys, really ugly. So now we're going to use our handy dandy tool that Brad Lagman made. All we have to do is release the tension, rotate it down here to an area that looks really nice and good. And we will compare the two. We're going to hit start on our handy dandy profilometer and let's see what we can find out. So far, looking real consistent and good. You know, the scale is 200 micro inches. And that's the key is that if it starts to get really irregular, it's going to jump off that scale. I mean, the reality is it's just changed that surface quite dramatically. Has it killed the surface? Well, that's not completely killed it, but it is definitely less than desirable to have a finish looking like that. And the whole change is just the fact that there was some corrosion from the engine sitting literally two months. Wish we had some of Gary and Steve's fog it when we had the engine on the dyno so we could actually have fogged it down. So definitely next time we're going to do that. But we figured you might want to kind of see when you see some corrosion like that, if you can see it, the profilometer can definitely see it. Definitely change the service finish. Something to keep in mind. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Nothing like watching Lake Speed go to town with a profilometer. <laughs> you know, I have my fun, right? I have my toys I like to play with. But, you know, I, I couldn't help but think when I was tearing the engine down, I was like, man, I wish I had some fog at that moment in time because I think back to, I was thinking back at that moment to last year right. when you and Steve were here in those pictures. My, what I was seeing in that bore was exactly what those pictures you had shown. I'm like, man, if we had known about fog when we took the engine off the dyno, we would never have 
had that, but I wouldn't have had that experience, and we wouldn't be and able to have you now. Gary Stinnett joining us, the uh, innovator of Foggit, and watching the video looks so much like the photographs that he brought last year, like improper storage. In your case, it was 20 years of just sitting. I think the engine was going to be in a museum, you know, just like a collectible thing. But there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. You're going to put your engine away. There's a right way and a wrong way, and uh, the innovation of Foggit, but there's, there's a whole process, Gary. Why don't you... Talk a little bit about some of the things that you've seen right. that kind of drove you to invent Foggit. Well, I heard a saying once that said, out of frustration comes innovation. Okay. Yeah. Is that great? Yes. It's good. So we were frustrated after, you know, I've been building just 42 years and seeing the same thing you guys saw. Mm -hmm. um, you tear them down and there's rust, different degrees, different styles, whether it was caused from uh, ethanol or methanol or just storage, uh, improper storage. Mm -hmm. So we developed a, started working. We tried first, we tried all the, the normal brands you see out mm -hmm. there, storage oils that are made for marine use. They're too thick or they're not, you know, they're, they're not good on spark plugs. They foul the plugs or whatever. So we just worked and worked and worked. And Steve and I worked together on this and over the last three or four years developed a formula that worked. And uh, so we brought it to market last year here and mm -hmm. debuted it. It's been going great we have dealers everywhere but the proper way is when you get down with the engine uh, whether it's each night each weekend month or a year however long you need to fog it if you're at the track you can just simply open the throttle blades whether it's fuel injected or or carbureted and have somebody spin the engine over for you while spraying it down through the carburetor for eight or ten seconds okay and that's fairly effective but the best way is if you remove the spark plugs and go right into the spark plug hole okay. or off the dyno when we ship engines every week we mm -hmm. pull the headers off to put it in a crate, right. we'll just bump it over till the exhaust valves open and shoot it right in the cylinder. And I got a flashlight in one hand and the, and the fog it in the other, and you can see in there and spray it. That's probably the best way. But uh, any way you can get it. I have guys that say, like, I'm alone. I have nobody to help me with. So uh, they either just do it with it running and spray it down there. It still works. It's just not as effective, and it takes more product to do that. Of course, we'd like to sell more product. So that works too but so hold, hold it for like four or five seconds uh, like eight seconds <laughs> eight yeah. seconds okay yeah um and there's some creative guys it's, it's fun to, to be involved in this and have people call you up with all the different uses and different mm -hmm. styles one guy taught me something he said i rigged up a foot switch to the starter button so i can do it alone i'm like Ooh. why didn't we think of that think how nice that'd be to run in valves mm -hmm. you just put, plug that in put your foot down there bump 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 run a valve bump it over and spray it with your foot and hold the throttle open spray it down through there um, the last car I built, the last engine I built for one of my race cars is I drilled and tapped in the front of the intake manifold and I put a ball cock valve. Mm -hmm. So just open the ball cock valve. Many guys use those on, on alcohol cars for lean outs. Mm -hmm. We'll just shoot it right in there while spinning it over. You don't even got to hold the carburetor open. So there's different ways of applying it. But it will not foul the spark plugs. So um, in case in point, my car at the U.S. Nationals, my Superstock car, mm -hmm. went 10.020 the very first day. I fogged it that night. The next morning went 10.01 with a 9. I fogged it that night. The next morning went 10 one with a 9. It, it does not hurt horsepower. It doesn't foul plugs. It starts great. We put an accelerant in there so it fires off in the morning first thing. And it uh, doesn't hurt horsepower a bit. You guys just uh, launched a YouTube channel. So for those of you out yeah. there, you're watching on YouTube as you are. We appreciate likes mm -hmm. and comments and clicking the bell and all that stuff. Swing on over to Gary's Fog It. And, and they're doing a lot of informative stuff, just you showing how it's done. Uh, we would spend a lot of other people's money here this weekend, right? Like yeah. cylinder heads and the, the cylinder finish and all of these different things. And when you get it done, you've dropped X amount of dollars, whatever it is. Uh, why would you not want to protect it? Well, that's so important to get the good cylinder finish, to get good ring seat. We've already seen how incredibly important it is. Why let corrosion kill it? You uh, gotta protect it. And this is cheap insurance. I mean, I bought three cans for my dad for Christmas. Yeah. You know, that was a Christmas present for dad because we do the vintage go-kart stuff, which right. is methanol. Yeah. And, you know, fogging those things down and flushing them is so critical. I mean, we can't even run the ethanol blended pump fuel in the flush fuel for that because it'll kill the carburetor. Right. So it, they're so sensitive with all the ethanol in the fuel, which is another issue by itself. But this is a great product. I mean, I've already started using it. Like you said, the other examples, I know Keith Jones used it on his head trimmer or something. It's oh, yeah. amazing. You know? Well, that, that's been the other fun part. And because what do we what do we do as usually in the, in the performance industry? We try to make things do other things. Right. right? Yeah. <laughs> I so got it. Well, every day cool. guys call me every day and they call me. He goes, you know what? That's the best bug and tar remover I ever used. <laughs> or they call up and they, the gun crowd is loving it. 
It cleans guns better than anything. Hmm. So it's it's really a, a multi-purpose product besides just a fogging oil. Yeah. And uh, from a competition standpoint, you know, four-time world champion, super comp, and the way that style of racing works is, you know, you'll, you'll run, some will say, like, first round every day, right? Like, you might run a round or two today and then put it away for the night and then a round or two tomorrow. But if you unload differently, you want to eliminate variables. What you just described, the consistency, you put it away, and when you come back tomorrow, it's going to be the same as it was. Whereas the condensation machine that is a trailer, right. at the end of the night, when you go to fire that thing up, whether it be the plugs are, are fouled, it just it seems to be such a worthy uh, addition to the whole competition racing engine with it, with engines today costing a race engine of almost any kind a minimum is probably thirty thousand dollars and up over a hundred thousand yeah. dollars why would you not want to care for that i mean it's kind of like brushing your teeth right oh, right absolutely. and and what fluoride was invented in 1955 and for toothpaste that made it much better well we just came out with something that's much better than using a common household product or just pouring transmission fluid down your carburetor. Well, I know for years, John Kazi was telling us we need something like this. So thank you for making it. I'm glad it's going well for you. Fogit.com. Go buy some. You need it. I tell you, it's fantastic. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm excited. And I'm excited Gary's back, of course. Two expos exactly. in a row, of yep. course. Yeah. And getting ready to head back out on the NHRA tour this year. Yes. Yep. What's your plan? I'm going to probably run a... a late summer schedule of that kind of really interested in the big money bracket racing stuff and we're really busy at work and we're really busy with fog it so i'll probably run the from july on nhra stuff good deal excellent excellent we I, got a new video coming up from uh one of our favorite pair of guys yeah speaking of nhra drag racing and total mm -hmm. seal yeah yeah bringing in the uh the, the the family so to speak little matt hartford eddie Grenache got in on yeah that. got eddie and matt together unbelievable gary thank you very much we'll see you out there mm -hmm. of course we'll throw it to the next video you're gonna like hartford you're gonna love eddie